Okay, in today's video, we're going to go over a problem involving two-dimensional projectile motion, and we're going to work a problem where we know the initial velocity of the object and the angle at which it is projected above the horizon. And this is the situation we have. We have this object which is going to be projected with some initial velocity above the horizon. The angle is measured between the velocity vector and the horizon, the horizontal, we know this angle, we know the initial velocity, and we do that, the object follows this simple parabolic path. Now, in this problem, I'm going to tell you that the initial velocity of the object is 27 meters per second, and that the angle that is projected above the horizon is 50 degrees. Now, we're going to do three things. We're going to figure out the maximum height. How high does the object go? We're going to figure out the total time that the object is in the air, and then we're going to figure out how far the object goes in the x direction in hopefully 10 minutes or less. Now, before we can actually do those three things, we have to do something else first. We have to decompose the initial velocity vector. That is because we know this vector is at 27 meters per second. But the object is doing two things at the same time. It's moving with some initial velocity, or it has some initial velocity in the x direction, and then it also has some initial velocity in the y direction. And to answer our three questions, we need to know what is the initial velocity in the x direction and what is the initial velocity in the y direction. So we're going to decompose this vector into its x and y components. Now you'll see we have an x component and a y component, and that is a vector, so I can move it as long as they don't change its direction or its magnitude, I can move it. And you can see now we have a nice right triangle, which we know an angle. We know the hypotenuse, the initial velocity is 27 meters per second long. We know this angle is 50 degrees. And therefore, we can use our sine and cosine trig functions to figure out the length of the opposite side and the length of the adjacent side. We're going to do the opposite side first using our sine function. You'll notice we know the hypotenuse, we know the angle, therefore the opposite side, which is the initial velocity in the y direction, is going to be equal to the initial velocity times the sine of the angle, which means it's 27 meters per second times the sine of 50, which tells us that the initial velocity in the y direction is 20.7 meters per second. Now we're going to do the same thing for the adjacent side, the cosine. We want to find the adjacent vix. That's the cosine times the hypotenuse. So we have the initial velocity in the x direction equal to the initial velocity times the cosine of the angle. Adjacent is always cosine opposite is sine. That means it's 27, because the initial velocity is the same. The angle now is the cosine of 50. And that tells us that the initial velocity in the x direction is 17.4 meters per second. So we took this initial 27 meters per second, the initial velocity, and we broke it down into its components, vi and vx 20.7 and 17.4. Now we can solve our three problems, the maximum height being the first. Now we're going to use our kinematic equations. The maximum height, we're going up into the air, so we're going to use our initial velocity in the y direction to answer this question. So what I like to do is write down all five of the variables, initial, final velocity, change in position, acceleration, and change in time. And we're going to fill in what we know and what we don't know, we know the initial velocity in the y direction is 20. We just want to figure out the height, how high the object goes. And when it gets to its top, to its maximum height, the final velocity is 0 meters per second. We know that in this case, when we have two-dimensional projectile motion, the object is basically experiencing free fall. And therefore, the acceleration in the y direction is minus 9.81 meters per second squared. Two-dimensional projectile motion, free fall, acceleration in the y direction. Now, we want to find the height, the change in y. We don't know the time. We don't need the time. Get out your kinematic equations. We want to solve for delta y. The first equation, not the first equation, but this equation doesn't have delta y in it, so we can't use that. The other three all have delta y, delta y, delta y. These two have time. We don't know the time. That means we can't use this equation. We can't use this equation. We're going to use this equation. Let's just check. We want to solve for delta y. We know the acceleration. We know the initial and final velocity. So there, we can use this equation. Now, we want to solve for delta y. 
you'll notice the final velocity is zero. That means that the final velocity squared is zero. That means that delta y is equal to minus the initial velocity squared divided by 2a. I subtracted the initial velocity squared from both sides divided by 2a to isolate delta y. Plug the values in, minus 20.7 squared divided by 2 times minus 9.81. You get the maximum height of the object is 21.8 meters. That's how high the object goes, maximum height. Step two, we're going to figure out the total time that the object is in the air. Once again, we're going to use our y values to do this, to figure out. We can't use our x values. We don't have enough information. So we're going to use the y values, initial, final, change in position, acceleration. This time, we're going to find time. Get out your kinematic equations. We need to find the time. You'll notice that this equation doesn't have the time in it, so we can't use that. Now you'll notice all of the other equations have the time. So you can use all of the other each each of the other equations. And sometimes it's fun to use all three and see if you get the same answer, which you should. I like to use this equation. I think it's the simplest one. So I'm not going to use this equation. I'm not going to use this equation, but I am going to use this equation. It has the time. I know the acceleration and the velocities. Alright? Now, in this case, this is one thing you got to be a little bit aware of. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use my final velocity as zero. That means that really when I calculate the time, I'm just finding the time it takes for the object to go from the ground surface up to the top of its path where the final velocity is zero. That means in order to get the full time, I'm going to have to multiply my answer by two. So I'm going to solve for t, minus initial velocity divided by a. That means t is equal to minus the initial velocity divided by the acceleration in the y direction. That means it's minus 20.7 divided by minus 9.81, which tells me that the answer is 2.1. Well, once again, that is only the time it takes for the object to have some initial velocity and then go to zero. The initial velocity is down here at the bottom, and then it goes to zero at the top. To get the total time, I have to multiply this answer by 2. Because the time it takes to go up is equal to the time it takes to go down. This is half the path. Therefore, the total time is 4.22 seconds. That's the total time that the object is in the air. All right, now we can figure out how far the object goes in the x direction. All right, now there's a couple things, two things you need to remember to do this. We're going to use the value in the x direction because we want to know how far going to go in the x direction. But we don't know the time. Well, maybe we do know the time, but we didn't calculate the time. We calculated the time it takes to go in the y direction. Well, if you think about it, the time it takes to go up and come back down is the same as the time it takes to go across in the x direction. So therefore, the time in the y is equal to the time in the x, or we should say maybe the time in the x is equal to the time in the y. So you can see, now we know the initial velocity, we know the time. And you should remember also that in the x direction, the object is not accelerating. It has constant velocity in the x direction. There's no acceleration. So this initial velocity is equal to the velocity at all times of its path. So it's always traveling at 17.4 meters per second in the x direction. So now you can see, we know the time we know the velocity, now we can figure out how far it goes. Because the distance something travels is simply equal to, if it's not accelerating, it's equal to the velocity times the time. Some velocity does that for some time, then we can figure out how far it goes. So the velocity is 17.4. It's a constant 17.4. It goes for 4.22 seconds. That means the total distance it travels is 73.4 meters. Now, I just want to point out, the velocity in the x direction is constant. So we can use this simple equation. The velocity in the y direction is not constant. It's accelerating, right? It slows down, and then it speeds up. So we cannot use this equation to figure out the height in the y direction. We have to use the other equation. All right, so there you go. We did all three of those things. How high the object goes. The total time in the air. The distance the object travels.
I think we did that in just about 10 minutes or less. Okay, so I hope you found that helpful. If you did, you should please do all of the following three things. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section. Please leave me a comment. I like those comments. Then also subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the next video.